Hello, this is a quick introduction to ARB 110. So what is this class? Just a basic idea of what we have going on here. In this course, we're going to be learning Adobe Photoshop and Adobe Illustrator. A lot of you have worked with Adobe Photoshop and not so many Illustrator. I used to really love Photoshop until I got to know Illustrator and now it may have taken over as one of my favorites. So Illustrator is a very powerful tool if you've never used it before. So people don't understand what the difference is between these. I want you to imagine that it is 1970 and you are working at a newspaper. So let's say there's a big story and the photographer brings in the uh, front page photo. So he's taking a photo of whatever exciting thing this is and you need to develop the photo. So you would go into a dark room and you would look at the negatives and you would make any changes for the front page. You would like make sure this is the perfect photograph you would print it out. That is Photoshop. So it's mainly was made to work with photos. You can create graphics in it, which we will be doing, but it was mainly started to for photos. Then let's say the editor needs a chart that was made to explain how the story happened. He has an artist create a design that explains that. Uh, he's gonna draw it up on pasteboard. He's gonna make little sketches. This is more like Illustrator. And of course, then they would go and put it all together with something called paste up. So they would cut out all of these little things. They would put the fonts together. That is actually a program called InDesign. So that's a good way to explain it. Another way to explain the difference between the two is we have two different types of images, a raster image, which is made up of pixels. That would be things like an image or a photo. That is Photoshop made up of a bunch of little tiny pixels. The second type of graphic is a vector graphic. Think of a vector graphic as math. So that would be things that are wireframes um, or that are created of wireframes. That would be Illustrator. So if you got something off, of an off the internet, say this little teeny tiny star, if you were to zoom in really close to it, you would see all of the little pixels that it has made because things on the internet are Ra um, pixels. They're rasters. They're made up of a bunch of pixels, just like the screen that you're watching this on. So you would see each little pixel if you got close up. A vector is made up of math, so it is going to be completely clean. It's X and Y coordinates that have been created and filled in. So that is the difference between the two. Here's another way to look at it. So a vector image is going to be created of all of these separate paths that are all joined together. Like I said, X, Y coordinates the mathematical representations of these, and then what are they filled with that makes a graphic. What's good about this is it can be made as big or as small as it needs to be. It is resolution independent. So a vector graphic could be made really huge and put up on a billboard, and it would still have the same resolution. Whereas a raster graphic, say this is an, a photo that I got off of Facebook, uh, and it is made up of pixels. It is raster. It's Photoshop. If you start zooming into it, you can see all the little dots that are created to make this. So if we tried to put this on a billboard, it wouldn't look all that good. That's the main difference between the two. So Illustrator. Stuff to know about Illustrator. Uh, the first chapter is going to be about Illustrator making raster images, turning in them into vector images. So if you had um, a, a bad drawing and you needed to turn it into a nice vector that could be blown up, how would you do that? So stuff to know about this. The first thing to know is Alt and scroll your mouse to zoom in and out. If you're on a Mac, that would be Command. But um, I am on a PC, so know that I'm going to say Alt. Alt and scroll will zoom in and out very easily while you're working on something. Another thing to know is sometimes tools are hidden. The book may be telling you to look for the ellipse tool and you don't see it anywhere. That is because it is hidden behind another tool. You will see this little triangle at the bottom of a tool and that means that there is something hidden behind it. You can either click and hold your mouse down or right click and see all of the tools that are hidden underneath the original tool. Now if you don't see the tool in the toolbar at all, you can just click these three little dots and it's going to pop out all the other tools that are available. And this is here because people like to edit the toolbar and have different tools that they like. So if you can't find it, just click those three little buttons. Let me show it to you on Illustrator. So in Illustrator, once again, if you're looking for a tool, 
You can just click and hold down your mouse and see all of the other tools are underneath it. Here's the one I was talking about before. They're all underneath it. And once again, you can click right here to get all of the different tools that you might be looking for that the book is trying to get you to use. Another thing we talked about is Alt and Scroll. So if you hold down the Alt key while you scroll your mouse, you will zoom in and out. And of course, hold down your space bar. You'll get the hand tool and then you can move around and you'll be able to use things better. So there's various different workspaces. I tend to use for this book the Essentials Classic. You can go to Window, Workspaces, and here are all of the workspaces. You can see that I've actually made one called Amy, which is a custom workspace that I use. But you can go, um, but you can go to any of these workspaces you, that you might need. And if you accidentally mess it up, you can click Reset and it will put it all back normal. So let's say we accidentally bring this over here and we want to reset it. Just go to Window, Workspace, Reset. Or you can click right here and it has all of the workspaces, say Typography, Painting. So I'm going to go back to Essentials Classic. And let's say we are looking for something specific, like I want to type something. If I start typing, you will notice that it has added a character panel down here in my properties. But if you need to get the actual window for character and you can't find it, you can always go up here to Window and notice that there is all of this stuff that you might need. So if the, if the book is telling you to look for a specific tab that you cannot find, just go to Window and you can see it. So right here, Type, there is our character window. And it's going to pop it up for us. So realize this can be moved around. You could also dock it over here so that you won't lose it. And you could even move it up top. So if ever the book is telling you to open up, say, the Paragraph tab or a Character tab or any tab that you can't find, just go to Window. So hopefully that'll help. So there you go. That's a basic overview of Illustrator.